We all see them and we all know them. Those companies with products that seem to sell themselves. They have a secret source, something that's going on that just makes their products so much more engaging than our own. These companies make us look jealously at our own products and wonder, how? How does some products seem to take hold in the market and spread effortlessly, while others don't? It's a good question and one worth answering. So let's take a moment to dig a little deeper into the subject of product virality and impart some pertinent insights that will help you turn your products into viral sensations. And there is a definite science behind product virality. It comes down to three particular points. Number one is the viral coefficient formula. Number two are the strategies and frameworks for viral growth. And number three is how to leverage these strategies and frameworks. And so we're going to start with number one. Let's explore the concept of the viral coefficient and what this means for virality. Now a viral coefficient is a number that describes how many new users a company's existing users are bringing to the company. It's a growth KPI that allows companies to quantify, track, and control for activities that encourage product adoption and customer acquisition. The viral coefficient is calculated using the following formula. VC equals R times CR, where R is the average referrals per customer, and CR is the average conversion rate of referrals. Now to make sense of this equation, it pays to look at an example. So let's say we have a company that's looking to understand its viral coefficient as part of its growth planning strategy. The first thing they must do is find R, the average number of referrals per customer. They do this by dividing the total number of referrals by the total number of current customers. So let's say this company has 200 referrals and 1,000 existing customers. This would make R equal to 200 divided by 1,000, or 0.2. Next is to find CR, the average conversion rate of referrals. We do this by dividing the total number of referrals that converted to new customers by the total number of referrals. Let's say this company had 20 out of 200 referrals that converted into paying customers. This would mean that their CR is equal to 20 divided by 200, or 10%. Now the last step in this journey to find our viral coefficient is to put this all into the equation. So the viral coefficient is going to be equal to 0.2 times 10%. Or in other words, the viral coefficient for this company is 0.02. So what this means for the company is that each of their current customers is contributing 0.02 new customers to the company's current customer base. And that isn't great. For a product to demonstrate virality, it needs a viral coefficient greater than one. Remember, the viral coefficient is the average number of new customers that existing customers are contributing to the current customer base. A number higher than one therefore implies that your customers are adding more than just themselves to your customer base. And the higher this number, the better. So this now begs the question for our company. How can this company improve its viral coefficient? It's a good question and let's find out. In practice, the answer to product virality is pretty simple. As the formula outlines, any increase in referrals, conversion rates, or both will result in an increase in the virality coefficient. Therefore, there are two key strategies a company can implement to improve product virality. The first is a strategy of increasing referrals, and the second is a strategy of increasing conversion rates. A strategy to increase referrals means a focus on initiatives that will result in more referrals. The outcome of this strategy is therefore more leads to convert into customers. And, a strategy to increase conversion rates means a focus on initiatives that will result in a higher proportion of referrals converting into customers. This would mean a more efficient use of the referrals we are generating from strategy one. Both are important and both are required for optimal viral growth. Any company that puts these two strategies at its core will be a company that continually plans, tests, measures, and modifies for improvements in referrals and conversions, and thus their products will naturally be more viral as a result. Then, we need to lead to these strategies. This means allocating resource, time, and space to ensure your team can succeed in their initiatives. Next, a good framework that allows us to segment referrals and conversion initiatives is really important, so that we can keep track of what we're doing. 
I personally advise companies to first segment their initiatives into either active or passive initiatives, where active initiatives require a level of management and resource, and passive initiatives don't. Then, I suggest you further segment these initiatives into either organic or paid. Using both criteria to structure our strategic initiatives not only helps keep all our initiatives tidy and transparent for management and staff, but it also helps with resource allocation and budgeting decisions at a management and board level. As you can see, we can choose which initiatives might be appropriate to the situation at hand. We don't have to use all of these initiatives to ensure viral growth, and we can pick and choose which ones might be appropriate. We might choose to allocate a budget to an active paid tactic like promotion to increase referrals, whilst also setting our product team KPIs around self-onboarding, which would be a passive organic initiative to increase conversion rates. Finally, and most importantly, coordination is key. Every activity within the company needs to coordinate to a broader goal and objective in order to achieve optimal virality. Getting objectives and initiatives to align is so important to ensure efficiencies are achieved that will optimize for virality. This is true not only for marketing and sales, but for all aspects of the business. Waste in all respects is the perfect antidote for virality, which isn't what we want. And with that, we're all done. Now you have the groundwork to turn your product into a viral sensation. As a final point, product virality and this framework isn't the sole domain of SaaS. All companies can benefit from measuring and tracking a VC as part of their marketing efforts. It's just a matter of applying this framework to your specific product and organizational requirements to optimize for referrals and conversions. And this is where I can help. I work with plenty of founders and their teams to discover and implement ways of improving product virality and growth. If you'd like to understand how I do this or how I can help you to improve your product virality or help with the growth of your business in general, then please reach out via LinkedIn, Twitter, or my website to get in touch. And until next time, I'm Aidan Keneally, and I'll see you on the next video.